we will work on the editable import next. And just a quick recap, here's how it works. When we click on a text, we will turn on the edit mode, where we can go ahead and edit the text. And when we click away, it will go back to normal. And if we hover on the text, there's a little pencil icon where we can click on it to toggle the edit mode again. And if we edit the text and click away, the text will be saved. It looks simple, but there's actually quite a few things going on here. All right, let's dive in right away. Let's first set out the basic structure by creating the element. And also load it back inside our home page. And now in a component, we will have a div wrapper that wraps around a span element that holds the text followed by the edit button when we hover on this text. And now we'll add some CSS to the wrapper. And also create a class called wrapper inside the module CSS file. We will also create an input class for the span element. We basically need two modes here in this component, the edit mode and the non-editing mode. Under the non-editing mode, we want to show the text as it is. While under the editing mode, we want to show a text input inside the span element. So that means inside the span, we basically need to put in an input element and we'll assume the value of it to be some props passed to this component. And we want this input element to be read only when we are in the editing mode. Let's create a state for the editing mode. So we'll create a state called is edit mode and set the default value to false and pass this state to the read only attribute. So this input element will be read only when we are not editing. And also setting the data type for the value prop in the prop types. All right, let's go to our browser to test our code. And I have up because I forgot to import the use state function. Let's quickly fix it. And now the error is gone. We'll go back to our homepage and add a value to our editable input component. All right, it seems like it's working. If we click on the input field, we were unable to edit the text at the moment. However, if I change the is edit mode state to true, we were able to see the edit cursor inside the text field now. Beautiful. It would be cool if we turn on the edit mode whenever we click on the text. Let's do that. We'll add a new on click event listener and I'll call the function turn on edit mode, which will simply set the is edit mode state into true. So now whenever we click on the text, we will enter the edit mode. All right, let's add the pencil icon next. The pencil icon is kind of hovering on top of the input field. We could achieve this easily by setting it into an absolute position. Let's make use of the icon button component that we have created in a previous episode. Next, let's style this icon so that it will only show when we are hovering on the text. I would like to pass some classes to the button icon component, but if I do it directly, I'll end up overriding the internal classes that I use in the component itself. So what I'll do is to merge the class name prop with the internal default classes. We'll first give the button a little bit of background color when we hover on it, and we'll define a new class inside our module CSS file so that we only show the button when we hover on the wrapper. And we'll add the button CSS to our button icon component. And now if you look at the browser, the button will only show when we hover on the text. Great. But now I think the button is too far away from the input field. Let's make the button to have an absolute position and place it on the right edge of the wrapper. We'll give the wrapper a fixed width so we can control how long the content should be. Next, we'll add an event listener to the button icon so that whenever we click on it, we will turn on the edit mode. And in theory, we should also make the button disappear while the edit mode is turned on. So let's short circuit this button. So we'll only show this button when the edit mode is off. So now when we click on a pencil icon, it will disappear. But now it leads to another problem. 
After clicking on a pencil icon, we should autofocus on the input field so the user will know that they can start editing the text. Let's implement an autofocus logic. Now to do that, one of the easiest way is to correct and react element reference by using the use ref hook. Now a react reference is an object that represents any value that we would like to mutate. And that includes a DOM element. You can think of it as some sort of fancy way to wrap around a data. The use ref hook function would accept a default value for the ref object. And what we want to do here is to set our input element as the ref object. So to do that, we can pass in a special ref attribute and load the input ref object. This will set the input DOM element as the subject of the reference object. Once we have set up the input reference, to focus on the input field, we first need to obtain the subject of the reference, which we can do so by reading the current property. So the current property represents the input element, and now we just need to call the focus function, and it should just work. Beautiful. Now we gotta solve one last problem. When we click away from the input, we should set the edit mode back to false. This is fairly easy to do. We simply need to add an on blur event listener to the input element, which will set the is edit mode state property back to false. And that is basically it. That is a working editable input. And now I'll do a little bit of polishing by relaying the props to the correct places. And that's it. We'll continue in the next lesson. I'll see you then. If you would like to see more content, consider supporting us by becoming a member at my website, Acadia.io. It is similar to Patreon, but in return, you get a lot of premium tutorials and lessons. If you can't become a member, that's totally fine. We are just happy that you are here. We spend a lot of time and energy to produce high quality videos for you. Feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube and if you can leave a thumbs up, you will really make my day. If you subscribe, I would jump for joy and I'll make more videos for you. Thanks for your support and I'll see you next time.